Oregon, known for its craft beer, the great outdoors, its ferocious football mascots, and poker? No. Some people are saying that Oregon has some of the best poker in the country, but could that actually be true? We'll answer that question and more on today's episode of Poker for Pound Pups. <laughs> good boy, Percy, good boy. Today, we're traveling down to the Rose City and checking out Portland Meadows to see how the poker action is in Oregon. We jump into the action with King Deuce of Diamonds, a hand we normally don't play, but we are allowed to do so because there is no rake. That's right, at Portland Meadows, you pay a $20 fee to get in the door, and then after that, there's no rake. Sitting on the button with a chance at improving to a netted hand, I go ahead and make the call with King Deuce of Diamonds, and we go five ways in a limped pot to Jack 9-6 with two diamonds. It checks around and the turn comes in the nine of diamonds, bringing in the flush, but pairing the board. The cutoff leads out for 20. I'm not going anywhere with the second best flush. I make the call, everyone else folds and we get the two of clubs on the river. The cutoff fires again for 25 and I think it's time to go ahead and raise for value. I make it 75. He asks if I have a flush. He thinks about it for a minute, makes the call. I show my flush and it is good. We've officially won our first Oregon poker hand. Next hand is King Queen offsuit from the small blind. I'm gonna let you listen to a lot of the audio from this hand after we decide to three bet to 60 bucks. <laughs> You know what I got? Well, that's good. You want to tell me? I have jacks. Okay. Maybe I'll play. The, I'll play this hand like I have jacks. I know I'm gonna get one caller. If I have jacks, would you say that's a good flop or a bad flop? All four of them. <laughs> so I should bet it. So I should bet it. I probably want to fold out your ace king hands. So would 85 pull out your ace king hands? King Jack. King Jack. It's Jack. I actually don't have jacks. Oh, you're going to show your card, right? You can see, you can pick one, but you can't pick both. No. Whoa. That's shady. That's shady. That's shady. We get the bluff through and certainly appreciate the assist from the hijack's imagination. One thing they do at Portland Meadows is a 5-2-2 Omaha no limit bomb pot. There are a max of eight players allowed. Everyone gets dealt five cards and we go straight to a flop of two different boards, one on the top and one on the bottom. This time around, we've got eight, seven, seven, four, three, and we've got low flush draws to both clubs and diamonds. The top board comes out king, five, deuce, rainbow, so we're open-ended, and the bottom board comes out queen, seven, three, with two clubs, so we've got middle set plus a flush draw. Sitting here with middle set and one of the best draws, I go ahead and lead out for 25 bucks. The low jack calls, and the small blind just decides he wants to shove his entire stack into the middle. He's all in for 352 bucks. Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. I've got all the outs in the world on the bottom board, unless he happens to have pocket queens. And on the top board, I've got something pretty solid with open-ended. So considering I have a decent chance at maybe winning both boards, I go ahead and make the call. The low jack folds. On the top board, the run out comes the four of spades and the nine of hearts. My opponent shows he has three kings in his hand, so he's got top set and has all the kings in the deck. We've got a chance at cracking it with either an ace or a six, but the run out comes a four and an eight. So we brick out on the top board. The bottom comes in the ten of hearts and the ace of diamonds. We're left with the fourth set, but it ends up being a winner. So we chop our first ever 5-2-2 Omaha No Limit Bomb Pot. Sadly, we chipped down $650 on a couple unfilmed hands. We'll tell you a little bit more about them later, but let's jump to the next hand, which is 6-5 of Diamonds. Probably the worst hand I play all day. 6-5 of Diamonds from the small blind. When the action player raises to 15, Unfortunately, I don't decide to three bet. I'm just one of three callers. 
The good news is we go to a flop of five, four, deuce, rainbow. So we've got top pair plus a gutter. I check. The low jack bets 50. A pretty big sizing on a board that's going to miss him quite a bit. The high jack makes the call as well. That's not a good sign. So either he's got an over pair or he's got total air here. I probably should go ahead and raise, but in cowardly fashion, I just make the call. And we go to a turn of the eight of clubs. Unfortunately, it's an over card, but at least we're double gutted now. The initial raiser in the low jack, who's been a wild player, could literally have any two cards, but I check and he checks it back. The hijack checks too. Considering that the turn checked around and the river is an over card, I'm pretty confident that the low jack is going to go ahead and bet. Rather than trying to catch a bluff and getting the hijack involved, I make the silly decision of leading out for $75 trying to make it look like I'm betting for value. But 75 into 210 is not big enough to get better hands to fold, so I really hate my bet here. I think I'm better off either check calling or check raising here. Anyway, I make a $75 bet and we get the bad news when the action player in the low jack makes the call. The high jack goes into the tank and ultimately folds. I tell the low jack his over pair is good and he shows me 10-9 offsuit for a random rivered top pair. That's the way things have been going lately. My timing's been horrible, but really my logic made no sense here. I should have bet the turn or check raised the flop when I had a ton of equity. I didn't. I chipped down and have a big hole to try and climb out of. $5 button straddle is on, which means I'm first to act in the small blind. And I finally have a real hand as I look down at pocket greens. I'm pretty confident that the action player is going to go ahead and raise it, so I decide to just limp for five bucks. Of course, when I finally have queens, the action player in the low jack decides it's not time to raise. So we're going five ways out of position in a limped pot to 997. I actually don't feel great about my over pair here, so I decide to check. Sure enough, now the action player leads out for 10 bucks, and I'm one of three callers. Turn is the three of clubs. I check again. The low jack continues for $10. And this time I'm the only one sticking around. And we go to the river of the five of diamonds. I check and sadly he checks it back. The low jack shows a seven and my pocket queens are good. Our timing has just been horrible today, but I guess I should just feel good about winning a pot that went five ways with pocket queens. All my big hands today are in the small blind and the button straddle is on. I've got king 10 of clubs. I'm not limping this one. I raise to 20 and get called by the low jack, the high jack, and the button. So a pot of 80 bucks and we get a pretty solid flop of jack, nine, deuce, rainbow. I decide to check and it checks around. So we get the free card and the turn comes in the queen of diamonds. I make it 25 and only the button makes the call. The river is the eight of hearts, thankfully not pairing the board, so we're sitting here with the nuts. So I bet 40 into 130. I think this should get called by hands like top pair, maybe two pair, and the sizing gives him a chance to bluff because hopefully it makes it look like I'm afraid of the straight. He thinks for a sec and puts in the raise to 90 bucks. Now it's just time for me to go ahead, put on my acting skills, and hope that he happens to have one of the few remaining tens. All in. And I decide to shove all in for 262, which is another 172 on top. Uh, can you put in the 90 and see what I'm looking at? If I can hold this, man. I mean, I got a straight. Uh, I guess you earned it. He flashes a 10, mucks, and we scoop a $654 pot. It doesn't get us back to even, but it certainly helps and was very much needed. <laughs> yeah, right. Should have called, right? No, I, I gotta go for value there. You I mean, could have two yeah, pairs. You, you could get some value. But then... Oh, you could be bluffing, yeah. yeah. I never bluff. Yeah, whatever. Another 522 Omaha bomb pot. 
This time I'm on the button with ace, king, 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 queen. We've got both hearts and spades. The top comes out ace, nine, six, rainbow, and the bottom comes out queen, eight, five with two hearts. So on the top board, we've got top pair, and on the bottom board, we've got top pair plus a flush draw. So we've got potential, we're in position, and after the cutoff bets 20 bucks, I'm one of three callers. The ace of spades comes in on top, improving us to trips, and the jack of hearts comes in on the bottom, giving us not only the net flush, but a royal draw. It checks around to us. I bet 75 and only middle position makes the call. Pot up to 270 and to the river we go. The 10 of spades comes in on the top board and the five of spades pairs the board on the bottom. So we definitely don't have the nuts on either board. And now middle position is all in for 132. I'm not sure if this is a snap call or not, or if this is a fold. I mean, we'd basically be needing to lose to a full house on both boards. So I don't like it. I hate the run out, but I go ahead and stick in the call. Middle position shows that on the top board, he rivered a full house as he had the last ace and hit the 10, but we scooped the bottom pot as he only had queen eight and our flush is good. So we avoid total catastrophe in the Omaha bomb pot sweepstakes. Our phone ends up dying. We'll tell you how we ended things for the night. But before we do, let's go ahead and show you some of the natural beauty of Portland and the surrounding area. All right, only a few negatives when we're recapping the Portland poker scene. One is that I couldn't get into a bigger game despite being on the wait list. And two, there were no phone chargers and no automatic shufflers. I know that might be a little thing, it takes a little bit longer for hands to get dealt. And for those of us who wanna be on our phones while we're at the poker table, it can be a little bit tough. So next time I head down there, I might have to bring a portable charger. Anyway, that's it for the negatives that I found. Positives. Nine-handed, no limit, Texas Hold'em. Excellent. Number two, people were kind and pleasant and welcoming. In addition to trying to be sneaky and film, I actually went half an hour before I could even get out of an initial conversation. Some of the players had driven from over an hour just to come play poker, so that's a sign of how friendly and positive the environment is. There were plenty of TV screens, so if you like to distract yourself and stay patient by watching sporting events, check that one off. Also, beers were only five bucks. So if drinking goes hand in hand with poker for you, five bucks is a pretty cheap price to pay. Bomb pots. If you don't like it, you can just sit out and there's no pressure at all for you to participate. The players know that it's quite different. So if you're from out of the area, they put zero pressure on you to play. But if you want to play, there's a lot of action. It's a quick way to swing your day from negative to positive or the opposite. But it's also good for the action of the table because it gets people involved. It generates big pots and it makes the other pots seem small. Therefore, it encourages people to play more. And finally, the biggest thing by far, no rake. $20 flat fee to get started, and after that, didn't pay a dime other than tips. As players, I don't know how many of you think about just how much you're paying in rake. In some places like Las Vegas and Reno, the rake is pretty decent, but in places like Washington and California, where you have either a high rake or just a drop, that can really add up. So just paying the one flat fee and being done with it really encourages you to play more hands and play a little bit differently because now there's a value in trying to take down some of these small to medium pots because you're not paying anything in rake. So that is a major win. And overall, I would highly recommend playing in Portland and Oregon in general. Next time I go down, I might check out some of the other card rooms in the area. Portland Meadows was highly recommended to me. So that's the place that I went. I loved it. I didn't run great. I uh, took a loss because I got called down by somebody who just wanted some action and they got really sticky with pocket sixes against a four bet. But so be it. I lost. I really enjoyed the game and I look forward to playing there again. Oregon poker really is poker's paradise. 
We played for six hours, didn't have a lot of hands. Part of that is because it was hard to film at first. And part of that's because my phone ran out of battery and because we were kind of card dead. So we've got a bonus mini session from up here in Seattle. We make our way to Silver Dollar Casino at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. I buy in for 500, have a couple bad runouts as I lose ace queen to queen 10 twice. So I start in a $200 hole before the table breaks. Three of us are sitting there with one open spot at the only other 1-3 table. So that leaves two of us to play heads up. This is the first I've ever been heads up at a casino beyond the end of a tournament. So I have absolutely no idea what my starting ranges should be, how to play the button differently. I don't know what I'm doing, but it should be fun. For those wondering, the player on the button is the small blind for a dollar. The other player is the big blind for three. I end up playing hands I would never normally play, and it turns into a bit of a pissing contest, with very few hands making it all the way to showdown. I initially started as the more aggressive player, but then he responds and ramps up his own aggression. I decide the strategy I'm going to take is to try and see flops, hit something, let him blast off, and then hold on for dear life. King-Queen is a hand I'll usually raise or three bet when we're playing nine-handed, so you know I'm going to raise when we're playing heads up but my opponent raises to $16 from the button. When he makes it 5X, I decide it's probably better to just go ahead and see a flop. Time to execute our strategy and it pays off as we hit top pair on a queen high board. I check and he checks back. The turn is a king and now we've got top two pair. Now we're talking, I check again. Surely this time he'll bet, nope. He checks again. River's a brick. I'm going to give him one more chance. I check a final time, and he does as well, turning over ace-jack suited. I mentioned that he doesn't go for the bait, and he says he spotted a tell of mine. Oh, shit, you found my tell. No, good read. Good read. No, you're good. Did he really spot a tell, or was he just worried about punting his stack away with ace high? I'm not sure if he's playing mind games, if he really saw something, but I'll have to store that one away for future sessions. I'm not sure where the truth lies, but for now we've got to just flush it and move on to the next hand. Well, we talked about playing some hands we don't normally play, and four deuce of spades qualifies. Not only do I play it, but I raise it on the button to 11, and the big blind three bets me to 31. Well, we've come this far. We've got plenty of possibilities. And we make the call in position to a flop of king, 10, three. We are reduced to backdoor draws. Ready to give up on the hand, but my opponent checks. So I take the free card. Turn comes in the four of diamonds. And now the big blind bets 42. They say pairs are tough to make, so I go ahead and make the call, and I jokingly tell my opponent that I want to see him put his money in dark. And you can listen to what happens. I want to see you put it in dark. 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 Oh. Oh. Good playing with you, man. That was fun. We go runner runner to hit two pair. Probably would have been pretty tough to call my opponent down with anything less than that. And we win our first ever heads up duel. Shortly after that, I got a seat at the other table, played a little bit, made a little bit of money, and left up about 200 bucks. That's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Poker for Pound Pups. Hey, everybody. Subscribe here to catch the latest episodes. Also, hit that like button and share these videos with anyone who might enjoy them. Doing that really helps the channel and its goal to support dog shelters. So thanks for watching Poker for Pound Pups. And have a great day.